Thank you very much. Now, let's see what I am, if you can see what I am. I am the Winton Professor for the Public Understanding of Risk. And what I'm going to talk about today are acute and chronic risks. Now, if this was vodka and I drank this morning and evening, I would have a chronic risk to my health. If I drink it and I go down and fall down the stairs and break my neck, that's an acute risk. So we've got to look at these two things. We've got to look at acute and chronic risks. And what I want to talk about is the fact that we are constantly bombarded with stories about we shouldn't do this, we shouldn't do that, it's very risky to do this sport, to drink this, to eat that. How do we weigh up all these stories? How do we take these stories apart? How can we compare all these risks that we're told about, morning, noon, and night? And so what I want to talk about is units to compare risk. And I'd like to start off with acute risk. This is a sort of risk where you wake up in the morning, ta-da, and you go to bed dead. You know, that's it. You know, that's it. You know, you thought that was okay. And I'm gonna the unit for that, I wish I'd invented this. It's the micromort. Now, <laughs> this is a really it's invented in Stanford about 40 years ago by Ron Howe. It's a great risk. It's a one in a million chance of death. So one in a million, that's like flipping a coin and coming up heads 20 times in a row. So uh, you could all experience a micromort. Um, I have, in fact, put poison gas jets in this lecture theatre. And if I flip it 20 times in a row, it comes up heads, then I'll put you to a painless death. Um, OK, how much do I have to pay you to play that game? Who'll do it for 1,000 pounds? Come on. Yes, you will. Of course you will. Who'll do it for a quid? Anyone do it for a pound? No, miserable lot. Um, so, OK, in fact, you know, you people who won't do it for £1,000, you do this all the time. You have these risks all the time. Every day in England and Wales, out of about 50 million people, 50 people are killed. They, they have non-natural deaths, accidents and violence. So one in a million people in England and Wales have a, a, a non-natural death every day. So on average, we're all exposed to one micromort a day. And we don't panic. We do get up out of bed in the morning. Now, this is, this is an average. It's, for, it's particularly concentrated on people over 80s and, and men between 16 and 24. But um, how can we spend our daily micromort? Well, we could travel. I could drive from here to Liverpool. It's about one micromort, about one in a million chance of dying. It depends if I go on the, on the motorway, it'll be a bit less. On A roads, it'll be about one micromort. Um, I could walk uh, about 15 miles. I could cycle 20 miles. The way I cycle in Cambridge is probably a lot less. So these are all just averages. Or I could go only six miles on a motorbike. Six miles on a motorbike. That's all you get for your one in a million chance. Your daily ration of deadly risk. OK, how else could we spend it? Well, we could give birth if you choose to give birth. In this country, the moment's about 80 micromorts. That's about, uh, what's that, about 500 miles on a motorbike. It's about London to Edinburgh on a motorbike. Giving birth on a motorbike, it's more. You can't, <laughs> you can't just add these up. This is really subtle mathematics here. Don't, you know, don't be naive about this. Okay, um, having an operation, general anaesthetic, emergency general anaesthetic, about 10 micromorts um, uh, routine, it's about five micromorts. When you have your next operation and the anaesthetist gets you to sign the consent form and says, oh, the risk is just like crossing the road, say, no, it's not. It's like walking 75 miles. It's like 30 miles on a motorbike. This is not, not so small. And you give birth in Sweden, it's safer. Giving birth in America, it's more dangerous, but that's an average, of course, a big variation, et cetera, et cetera. Now, what about leisure activities? We don't ch particularly choose to stay in hospital, but how, what about our extreme sports? Scuba diving, about five. Um, uh, hang gliding, about eight. Going skiing, about half a day. Um, taking drugs, taking ecstasy, is about three micromorts a tablet. Heroin user, about 33 a day. So we can start making all these uncomfortable comparisons between heroin and hang gliding. Um, these are really, I think it's really useful things to do. Now, um, I, was, I did a TV program recently, and they said, oh, come on, about chance, uh, you'll do a skydive. That's it, do a, sky, do a skydive. Hang on, let's do the sums. You go onto the US Parachuting Association website. God, it's dis, dis, it is depressing. Um, they, uh, out, of, out, of, um, out of three million jumps last year, 20 people died. Now, these, you know, these are serious deaths. These are, this is real hitting the ground sort of deaths. And, um, and they're all listed there, exactly what happened and how it, what, oh, God, it's really gloomy reading. Anyway, um, interesting, it's about seven micromorts, a skydive. Now, interestingly, of course, most of these, all these people were very experienced parachuters, doing things with small shoots, you know, um, jumps you know, with, with um, you know, all sorts of, uh, they were trying new things out. They were taking risks. Just the standard, you know, I did a tandem dive. It wasn't anything like seven micromorts. It's only an average. Running a marathon is about seven micromorts as well. There's a, there's a general tendency, extreme sports are all between about five and ten each time. It seems if they're more dangerous, like a base jumping is about 400 off that. 
Um, yeah, I'm mountaineering. Out of every 25 people who reach the summit of Everest, one dies. Um, so one in 25 was the risk in a recent study of any, any climb above 8,000 meters. That's 40,000 micromorts. The only comparable thing with that is a bombing mission over Germany in World War II, RAF Bomber Command, one in 25 chance of not coming back. 40,000 micromorts, about one micromort a second when you're on a, in, in Bomber Command. That's why 55,000 of them died. Um, so th these are acute risks that we, that we take part. And we choose whether to take them or not, and we can make these comparisons. But not all risks are like that. We've got the chronic risks, the things that aren't going to kill us straight away. For example, that's my favorite sort of diet. This is, this is, this is the sort of chip shop I like. Now, a spam fritter, and many of you, you know, those of you who aren't English will wonder what a spam, don't even ask what a spam fritter is. Just take it from me, it's disgusting. Now that, unless you choke on it, is not going to kill you on the spot. But if you keep on stuffing them down your gob year after year, it's not going to do you any good at all. Now, how can we compare these sorts of risks? Micromorts are not the right unit for this kind of risk. OK, what they're going to do in the end is shorten your life. Whereas this orange juice they sell in Finland, it's great. Live longer than your friends, it promises. So, and I mean, isn't that a wonderful ambition? You know, don't we all want to do that? <laughs> so. These things, what these things do that we poison our body with or, or reward our body with is make us live longer or shorter. Not guaranteed, but it might do. So this is the sort of story that we get in the newspapers all the time. Last week in the Daily Mail, don't drink more than a quarter of a pint a day. That's about that much beer a day. It was saying, because um, it would save, if everyone drank on average that, um, we would, four and a half thousand lives a year would be saved. Now, this is terrible reporting of a study. It was dreadful reporting. But the study basically showed that if, if all the drinkers in the UK cut down their consumption by 60%, which on average will be a unit less uh, alcohol, that's eight grams of alcohol, about one drink a day less, then four and a half thousand lives will be saved. Okay, let's do the sums. What does that mean? What does that mean? It was on, oh, it's terrible reporting. Let's do the sums. What does that mean? Four and a half thousand lives, um, 500,000 people, this is in England, die each year, so it's about 1% of deaths avoided each year. This is only chronic risks of cancer, heart disease, etc. So um, let's say accidents uh, would also be you know, reduced by the same amount. Let's say a 2% reduction in mortality every year if everyone cut down their boozing by about 60%. So that's what this was estimating. And we'll believe it for the moment. Okay, 2% reduction, what does that translate to? It turns out that when you look at the, the life tables, the survival in this country, if everyone's risk of dying was reduced by 2% every year, on average, the gain in lifetime would be 11 weeks. You'd live 11 weeks longer. Instead of living to an average of 80, you'd live to an average of 80 and 11 weeks. You know, this is a, it's not very exciting, is it? It doesn't sound terribly impressive. And, Especially when you average it over 60 years boozing, it works out <laughs> at five minutes a day. So what's that saying? And in fact, what they also showed, of course, was that if, if, everyone, um, if everyone stopped drinking, um, you, would, you, would, uh, you, wouldn't say, you wouldn't save any lives at all. And so in because, in fact, the first drink is beneficial because of heart disease. So what, they really work, what it really works out as is that if that was wine, that'd be one drink about, the first drink each day is medicine, and it gives you five minutes extra life on average, and the second one is poison and takes it away again. And then the third one, that's poison as well. It doesn't go medicine, poison, medicine, poison. No, 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 no. no. Don't think that it goes medicine, poison, 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 poison. <laughs> No, it's really sneaky like that. And it adds up. It adds up as well. So six units is half an hour off your life. OK, what about other things that we see? There's another story a little while ago. Red meat dramatically increases the risk of cancer. This is a lovely story in the Daily Mail, because it says if we all eat nuts, the risk of, of dying is reduced by 20%. Amazing. So one in five of us will live forever, but, <laughs> but we will only be eating nuts. So you know, this doesn't sound so great. Just the reporting of this drivel. Anyway, drivel. Never mind. What does that mean? Well, this was a Harvard study. Um, oh, no, I haven't got my phone on me. Um, the, uh, the, uh, the Harvard study sh said that if uh, we all ate uh, a portion of meat a day, it's three ounces, it's about the size of an iPhone, that's about that much, that much meat every day, like a, it's a burger, um, then that increases the annual risk of death by 13%. And that's what the study showed. We'll believe the science for a moment. We won't argue about that. 13%, what does that translate to? Again, if we look, apply that 13%, sounds rather large, to a lifetime, 
It works out as one year less life because of eating this portion of meat every day. That's what, the, that's what that translates to. And one year less life corresponds to half an hour reduction in your length of life on average. So the burger, half an hour. That's the translation. So half an hour, so that's equivalent to six drinks, etc. So we've got the basis for a unit of, of chronic risk. Half an hour off your life expectancy for each day with a habit is a micro life. Okay, why do I call it a micro life? It's a millionth of a life. Why is it a millionth of a life? Well, it turns out a million half hours is 57 years, which is about the length of your adult life. So if someone in their 20s now can expect to live another 57 years or a million half hours. So you sit down, you watch the Eurovision Song Contest, six micro lives gone, just like that. <laughs> ne never, never to be repeated. You know, an episode of Friends, another one. <laughs> Just gone like that. So these are how we spend our micro lives. There's 48 a day we're using up anyway, but how we live. How, but, how, but we can use up more in a day. Whoopee. You know, we, can, we, can, we can lose them by eating the burger. I took these, these are all taken in my yard uh, yesterday. We need a burger. As I said, we can get about six units of drink, <laughs> stick down through a few cans of lager. Two cigarettes. <laughs> two cigarettes on average is half an hour of your life expectancy, averaged over a lifetime of smoking. So that's two cigarettes, same as that. Now, I should warn you, those of a nervous disposition may want to look away now. <laughs> being five kilograms, <laughs> being every day you are five kilograms overweight, like I am, is another half an hour of your life expectancy, another micro life. So they're all these habits, that's two hours worth every day with that lot. Can you imagine it? Anyway, so um, the metaphor I'm using here is of accelerated aging. I'm changing the metaphor of risk from one of living longer to accelerated age, aging. The point is, or living shorter length of time. The point is that telling people, oh, it'll take a year off your life, is not very interesting. Uh, Kingsley Amos made a lovely quote. He said that I'm not going to give anything up for the sake of another year in a nursing home in Western Supermare. Now, some of you may be, and there's nothing really wrong with Western Supermare, but even if you don't know it, you get the feeling that, you know, who wants to, who wants to stop doing anything in order to just to live a, you know, a little bit longer and being cared for, being old and dribbly? Not that you have to be old and dribbly, but you may be. So, but we can change that metaphor to one of living life faster. And this seems so in terms of the, uh, the speed at which you're living. So someone smoking 20 cigarettes a day, 20 cigarettes a day, that's, um, that's 10 micro lives, that's five hours. So instead of going towards their death at 24 hours a day, they're going at 29 hours a day towards their death. They're rushing towards their death through that cigarette. Now, and, uh, and the drink and the being, being overweight is, is pushing you towards your death faster. You're living faster. You're aging faster. Now, you can slow it up. Um, you take a statin, it's about half an hour increase in your life expectancy for a statin. So there's been a suggestion that at the, at, at the door of um, burger places like McDonald's, there should be a little bowl with statins in there. So you can take the statin out there. Because it actually, mathematically, it just well cancels out the burger that you just <laughs> stuffed your face with. Now, so th th we can, and we can shorten it, we can um, uh, get more micro lives, in fact, to slow this aging by, by good diet. Um, five fruit and veg a day looks like, on average, it puts in about an hour a day onto your life expectancy compared to someone who doesn't. The exercise is interesting. Exercise is, is, is really curious because compared to being a complete slob, the, the epidemiological evidence suggests that the first 20 minutes of moderate exercise each day, brisk walking, cycling, things like that, puts an extra hour on your life expectancy comparing. So you get a real benefit for the first 20 minutes, gives you an extra hour, two micro lives from that first 20 minutes. The next 20 minutes of exercise gives you 20 minutes. Now, that means that you live longer, but you spend the whole damn time exercising. <laughs> now, whether you, whether you think this is worthwhile or not is, of course, another issue. And the next 20 minutes doesn't give you anything like as much. It's highly non-linear, the benefits from exercise. So essentially, everyone should just get off their backsides and I'll get, I'll get off the sofa. Okay, now, there are, of course, you know, you could say, oh, this is all very simplistic, uh, because um, what I've done is taken epidemiological evidence and applying it to the individual. And I know that these micromots are not my risk. You know, they, they, my risk doesn't exist. You can't find my risk. You can't measure it. These are metaphors, they're constructions, they're narratives, they're stories. 
the, the, the half an hour, you know, per, per burger and the, and the cigarettes and things like that. I know that, you know, if I smoke two cigarettes, who knows what effect it has on me? This is only really a pro rata measurement when averaged over the whole population. So, but it's, so this is deliberately using a different metaphor, a different story in order to make a gripping narrative in order to compare these risks. But I must say, every time I read one of these stories in the newspapers, I wish it was put in these terms that I might be able to understand. So thank you very much indeed.